Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us at our second annual Justice for Animals fundraiser. I'm coming to you tonight from the wonderful Tamerlan Sanctuary in New Jersey, home to hundreds of rescued farmed animals. I'm so personally touched to see all of you here, and I see lots of names I recognize, and some new folks as well. Since our Justice for Animals event last year, lots has happened. We've had many successes, and we're gonna share some of those with you this evening. But there's one story that I personally wanted to share tonight because it's a behind the scenes look that reminds me of why ALDF's work is so important. It reminds me why we're all here. Back in October, we received an email from a prosecutor in Colorado. The prosecutor was thanking us for helping her with a case of horrific abuse of a young five month old puppy that took place over a period of four days. I won't go into the details of what happened to that puppy because it's very painful even to describe, and tonight is a night to celebrate. I will tell you the outcome. The puppy was removed from the perpetrator and eventually adopted into a safe, loving home. The perpetrator was convicted of five counts of animal abuse and banned from owning animals for a year. And here's where you all come in. Thanks to donations from generous donors like all of you, ALDF is able to provide hands-on support like expert witnesses to assist prosecutors across the country in defending and protecting animals. I wanna share with you what this prosecutor told us. Here's what she said. I have the greatest gratitude to ALDF because but for your gracious donation of expert witnesses, I would have had a really hard time putting this case together. I would have expended twice the time second guessing myself or questioning my strategy and I relied upon the expert witnesses nearly weekly to bounce ideas, trial presentation, investigation, and many other needs. During the trial, the expert attorney provided by ALDF was essential to my case. I'm just so grateful that ALDF exists and that there are people out there that believe in this work. This testimony from a state attorney in the everyday trenches of prosecutions really touched me. And I wanted to share it with all of you joining us tonight because that work is thanks to you. ALDF does so much work to help animals and our work doesn't always hit the headlines. We do work behind the scenes, tackling litigation against systemic animal abuse that might take years to resolve, helping prosecutors and law enforcement across the country take on individual animal cruelty cases, working with politicians at every level of government to enact laws that ultimately elevate the status of animals so they aren't treated like inanimate objects or things. Now, before we continue, I want to especially thank our incredible Platinum Event Chairs, John and Timmy Sobrato. John and Timmy are deeply committed to making the world a better place for animals with a special passion for improving the protection of farmed animals. We are so very grateful for their inspiring leadership and for sharing our commitment to using the law to make systemic changes for animals. Thank you, John and Timmy. I also want to thank our three amazing sponsors, including platinum sponsor Carol House Furniture, as well as gold sponsors Beyond Meat and Oric Harrington and Sutcliffe. Their support has helped make this event possible. We know, and all of you know, that all of our clients are innocent. Our clients, those animals suffering on factory farms, in roadside zoos, in puppy mills, are depending on all of us to speak on their behalf. So tonight, I'm asking you to dig deep and support the Animal Legal Defense Fund as generously as you can. We need your help to continue our fight for stronger laws, to continue to file high impact lawsuits and continue to be the legal voice for all animals across the country. We can't do this work without you. To start things off tonight, I am really happy to welcome back MC for this evening, Gail Stallings. Gail is a longtime animal advocate who is passionate about our work. Over to you, Gail. Thank you, Stephen. Good evening, friends, and thank you for joining us. My name is Gail Stallings, and I am excited to be here with you virtually as your host for this evening's fundraising event. We have so much planned for you. Tonight, we are going to celebrate our victories, highlight urgent animal protection issues, and honor four extraordinary individuals for their significant contributions to advancing animal protection. 
And most critically, we will be raising needed funds during our fund in need and throughout the evening so that the Animal Legal Defense Fund can kick off the new year strong. Make sure to stay tuned all the way through to the end for an exclusive performance by Moby, a dedicated animal advocate. I want to thank you again for being with us tonight to support the mission and the work of the Animal Legal Defense Fund. As a longtime supporter of animal protection, I am honored to be here. The Animal Legal Defense Fund began the field of animal law and continues to be a trailblazer in winning lawsuits for animals and using every legal tool to create lasting protections for animals. Philanthropic leadership plays a critical role in enabling the Animal Legal Defense Fund to accomplish our work. One couple's philanthropic leadership has been truly inspirational to ALDF. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce John and Timmy Sobrato, the platinum chairs of this fundraiser and longtime supporters of ALDF who have kicked off our fundraising tonight with a special gift of $100,000. Hello. We are John and Timmy Sobrato and are proud to be associated with the Justice for Animals virtual event as its platinum chairs. We are delighted to be here with you and the Animal Legal Defense Fund this evening. We support the Animal Legal Defense Fund because it is one of the most effective animal protection organizations we know of. We love all animals, but our personal passion is to help farmed animals because of the billions of animals who suffer on factory farms each year the institutionalized cruelty they endure, and the fact that farmed animals are almost entirely overlooked when it comes to any legal protections. We feel it is so important to stand up for them. We know how extremely tough it is to create change within the highly political and powerful industrial animal agriculture system. The Animal Legal Defense Fund examines the regulations, policies, and laws that apply to this system, as well as those that are not enforced. They use their legal knowledge to challenge this system in strategic ways. We appreciate that their litigation expertise can inform their legislative strategies and are also pleased with the inroads that ALDF is making in the legislative arena on the federal, state, and local levels. So please join us tonight in generously supporting the Animal Legal Defense Fund so that they can continue to carry out their extraordinarily good and vitally important work. The animals need the Animal Legal Defense Fund and they need us. Thank you. Thank you so much, John and Timmy, for your fantastic support of the work of ALDF and for your very special support of tonight's event. I hope you will join John and Timmy tonight with your own generous support. One very important area is fighting ag-gag laws, laws that criminalize undercover investigations on factory farms. This is to prevent the public from seeing that extreme animal cruelty is business as usual in industrial animal agriculture. You would think that after ALDF's victories in overturning these unconstitutional laws in five states, we could declare a permanent victory. But this industry shows no sign of backing down as they continue to appeal these cases and states continue to pass such laws. ALDF has created a short documentary featuring actress and animal advocate Edie Falco to educate voters, the media, and lawmakers on the problem with ag-gag laws. Here's an excerpt. When it comes to farming, our expectations couldn't be further from reality. But why is that? This battle is fueled by laws that seek to gag would-be whistleblowers and undercover investigators. To understand ag-gag, we must first look at CAFOs. Concentrated animal feeding operations are factory farms that confine animals for over 45 days a year in a variety of unnatural conditions, such as metal stalls or windowless warehouses without vegetation. 
a stark contrast to the red barn farms of the past, which were mainly small-scale outdoor operations located in your neighborhood. The animal agricultural industry continues to use this imagery in their marketing to give you the impression that their animals lead happy, healthy lives. That could not be further from the truth. Today, 99% of all animal products consumed in the U.S. come from animals who are raised in CAFOs before being transferred to slaughterhouses. Fearing the public outcry that their tactics would elicit, the animal agriculture industry fought to conceal their methods rather than raise their standards. Factory farms are generally exempt from environmental protection regulations. Yet, the Environmental Protection Agency cites animal agriculture as the number one cause of water pollution, more than all other industrial sources combined. When factory farm runoff containing manure and fertilizer leaks into waterways, it promotes the growth of algae blooms that create oxygen-deprived dead zones in which marine life cannot survive. These toxins contaminate not only our oceans and rivers, but also the water that we drink. With ag-gag laws in place, we are kept from seeing exactly how animal agriculture contributes to the degradation of our environment. Even beyond the animal agriculture industry, in some states, ag-gag laws are broad enough to penalize whistleblowing across the spectrum of businesses, including hospitals, elder and veteran care facilities, and schools. Ag-gag laws are a direct attack on the First Amendment and on free speech. This is the primary way that the Animal Legal Defense Fund has been challenging and overturning ag-gag laws across the country. A federal bill called the Farm System Reform Act has been proposed to transition animal agriculture away from factory farming by banning the opening of new CAFOs, phasing out the largest CAFOs by 2040, and holding them accountable for the pollution they release into the environment. The bill also seeks to protect family farmers and ranchers who've been hurt by large corporations and to help former CAFO owners convert to healthy agricultural practices. The Animal Legal Defense Fund is committed to being a voice for the voiceless, to supporting not only the animals who desperately need rescuing, but the people working to help them. And that's why we're fighting to end ag-gag laws. This video underscores ALDF's need for ample financial resources to fight for transparency of factory farms. Now, I am pleased to introduce acclaimed actress and singer Bellamy Young, who will be presenting our Leadership in Animal Advocacy Award to Emmy Award-winning actress and animal advocate Edie Falco. Bellamy is best known for her award-winning role as President Millie Grant on the series Scandal and will soon be seen in ABC's new series, Promised Land. Bellamy is a longtime supporter of ALDF and remains dedicated to our mission to protect animals. Edie Falco is known for her role as Carmela Soprano on the hit HBO series, The Sopranos, and most recently starred in the TV drama, Impeachment, an American Crime Story. She is also a four-time Emmy Award winner, but Edie's successful acting career is not all that she has achieved. She uses her celebrity status to advance the humane treatment of animals. Partnering with several different animal protection organizations, Edie is engaged in animal advocacy in countless ways, including supporting legislation to shut down the puppy mill pipeline in New York, calling for a ban on horse-drawn carriages in New York City, and speaking on the link between animal cruelty and human domestic violence. She has also spoken passionately about the plight of elephants in circuses and orcas in SeaWorld, and has joined other activists in New York to protest against McDonald's cruel treatment of chickens in its supply chain. Last April, Edie joined Animal Legal Defense Fund and dozens of other celebrities in urging Congress to pass the Big Cat Public Safety Act, and this important bill has been reintroduced in the U.S. Senate. And most recently, Edie narrated the dangers of ag-gag laws, of which you've just seen a clip. In short, Edie has used her considerable platform to shine a light on the injustices that plague animals. And on behalf of the Animal Legal Defense Fund, it is my pleasure to present you, Edie, with the Animal Legal Defense Fund's Leadership in Animal Advocacy Award. We thank you for your tireless work on behalf of the animals. 
Hi, uh, I wanted to say how honored I am to receive the leadership award from uh, the Animal Legal Defense Fund. Uh, they do the good work and any time spent in the defense of uh, animals who are being mistreated is time well spent. You know, the, the time I've spent looking into the eyes of animals, some of the ones that you see in some of these undercover videos it's just preposterous to me some of the things that continue to go on um and uh we're here to put an end to that so uh, i will work tirelessly to that end and i am honored to be uh associated with such a great organization and i will continue to work until they are no longer needed thank you thank you so much thank you bellamy and thank you edie the ability to investigate, document, and publicize corporate agricultural abuses and push for legislative and policy changes is imperative both for animals and for our own health and safety. There is no animal protection issue that affects as many animals as the treatment of farmed animals. I have a wonderful announcement. Adding to John and Timmy Sobrato's generosity, Skip and Mary Trimble have been inspired to give a leadership gift as well. And thank you, Mary and David Love, for your very generous gift of $50,000. Thank you so much. And to add to this already amazing start, Margie Perenchio and Suzanne Crocker Ritchie have also given leadership gifts at the $50,000 level. Wow! Collectively, these generous donors have started us off with over $300,000. I am feeling inspired. With this powerful start, it's time for our fund to need, where you will see examples of how your gifts impact the lives of animals. We invite you to pledge your support tonight. We're going to start at $25,000 as we work together to reach our goal of $750,000. Remember, we are almost halfway there. A gift of $25,000 will help fund litigation to strike down unconstitutional ag-gag laws and defeat corporate agricultural legal challenges. The extreme animal cruelty on factory farms must be exposed to the public. As our short documentary described, the need for transparency and accountability within this industry has never been more critical. A gift of $25,000 will help our litigation and legislative teams fight laws that seek to gag whistleblowers and undercover investigations in factory farms. The stakes are higher than ever. Recently, the state of Kansas, unwilling to accept ALDF's victory in overturning their ag-gag law, has petitioned the Supreme Court to review the case. 11 states have joined together to file a brief supporting Kansas's request. ALDF must fight to maintain these critical victories for animals. And to do that, we must retain attorneys with Supreme Court expertise. Your gift tonight is extremely important in helping ALDF Prepare for a challenge at the Supreme Court level. Agnes Gund, thank you for your gift of $25,000. Janice Rosenthal and Dr. Jeffrey Rinkoff, thank you for your gift of $25,000. Who will jump in with a gift of $25,000? to fight unconstitutional ag-gag laws and fight for animals who are unprotected by even the most basic animal protection laws. Tatiana Fritas, 
thank you for your gift of $25,000. This work is so important. And Rita Vallette, we have another gift of $5,000. Thank you, Rita. We appreciate you so much. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a very special person, ALDF's newest board member, the dynamic Ginny Chu. Hi, I'm Ginny Chu. I'm a member of the board of directors of the Animal Legal Defense Fund, as well as a board member of the Hawaiian Humane Society and past chair. I started my life quite uniquely as a child prodigy at the age of five years old when Ed Sullivan discovered me. I traveled throughout the world performing, Carnegie Hall, before the late President Kennedy and President Bush, as well as doing a movie with Elvis Presley called Girls, Girls, Girls. Although music is still a big part of my life, animal welfare and protection is now my main passion and mission. That's why I'm so grateful to the Animal Legal Defense Fund for the amazing work that they do. They fight for our animals in courtrooms, they educate judges, and they get laws passed. They are very effective. That's why tonight I am pledging $25,000, and I invite you to please join me and be a partner of the life-saving work that ALDF does every day for our precious animals. They are dependent on us, and we cannot fail them. Their lives are precious, and they matter. So please join me. Lulu thanks you on behalf of all our animals, and mahalo and aloha. Thank you for sharing your passion for ALDF's work tonight, Jenny. And thank you for your gift of $25,000. ALDF is truly honored to have your spirited leadership and generous support. As part of ALDF's efforts to recognize animals' interest in the courts, we are working to pass courtroom animal advocate program laws, or CAP laws in states across the country. Watch this brief video to understand why. You've got a victim that can't testify. You've got a need for very complex, very scientific forensic analysis. And you've got some really unique laws that aren't always intuitive and aren't the kind of things that your average prosecutor, defense attorney, or judge is going to be familiar with. They're also dealing with living, breathing evidence um, that's separate from inanimate objects. And so the animals have to be cared for during this time while the case is uh, prosecuted, which can be months, it can be over a year sometimes. So an advocate is someone who can keep their eyes on this animal throughout the process, make recommendations throughout, and ensure that the animal is receiving the best care. So we're looking at things like mental health treatment. We're looking at things like education, things that really prevent future animal suffering. Possession bans are vitally important, um, especially in egregious cases of animal cruelty, because we want to ensure that someone who has committed such a violent crime against animals can't get their hands on another animal. There are clearly established links between humans harming animals and humans harming other humans. So if we can intercept these crimes early, um, provide some sort of education and therapy to these young offenders, we can hopefully divert the type of action in the future. Your gift of $15,000 will allow supervised law students or volunteer lawyers to advocate for animal victims in criminal cruelty cases. These volunteers appear in court assisting the judge by drafting briefs, conducting research, gathering information from veterinarians, animal control officers, and law enforcement officials, and making recommendations on behalf of the animal victim's interests. 
thank you so much, Lila Ahmed and Mike Wise, for your generous gift of $15,000. Thank you also to Brad Goldberg for your $15,000 gift. And up oh, there's Vanessa Taylor. Thank you for your gift of $15,000. David Braff and Nico Christou, they've come through with their gift of $15,000. Your commitment makes all of this work possible. Your support is bringing us closer to our exciting goal of $750,000. Now, moving on to our $10,000 level. Did you know that 42 states explicitly exclude farmed animals from basic animal cruelty laws? And of the eight states that don't exclude them, cruelty against farmed animals is rarely prosecuted. Right now, ALDF is working with lawmakers and stakeholders in Colorado to pursue basic protections for farmed animals. In New Jersey, we are getting closer to passing a state ban on the cruel pig and veal gestation crates, which are so small that animals are unable to even turn around. As you can see in this undercover video, gestation crates are metal cages that can find mother pigs for virtually their entire lives. Veal crates essentially immobilize male calves who are naturally energetic and playful. The bill would outlaw both of these crates. Pass bills to outlaw gestation crates passed the New Jersey legislature with overwhelming bipartisan support. Polls indicate 93% of New Jersey voters support a ban on the extreme confinement of mother pigs. Help us get this bill to the finish line. Will you make a $10,000 gift to help our legislative team fight for laws so badly needed for farmed animals? And now for a very special part of the evening. We are excited to honor United States Senator Cory Booker for his leadership in animal protection. To present this award, please join me in welcoming Agnes Gund, a civic leader and staunch supporter of education, environmental, animal, and social justice issues. She is President Emerita of the Museum of Modern Art and chair of its International Council. Ms. Gund has received the National Medal of the Arts from President Clinton, the J. Paul Getty Medal, and the inaugural Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg Women of Leadership Award. She has been a longtime supporter of animal protection and rescue organizations and a lifelong animal lover. On behalf of the Animal Legal Defense Fund, and supporters across the country, I am pleased to present the Leadership in Animal Protection Award to United States Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey for his lifetime commitment to the pursuit of justice. Senator Booker has an extensive history of championing animal protection issues and working towards a food system that reflects our values. This award recognizes the progress you have made toward a more kind, sustainable country. At the onset of the pandemic, Senator Booker, together with the Animal Legal Defense Fund, became a leading voice in highlighting the dangers and injustices faced by marginalized slaughterhouse workers and communities. Thank you, Senator Booker, for challenging your fellow legislatures to demand transparency when it comes to public health and for introducing legislation like the Farm System Reform Act. I've been fortunate to know Senator Booker a long time, and I've long admired his commitment to social justice. To me, animal rights are a social justice issue, and I think you can tell a lot from a person by how they treat animals. I admire Senator Booker's commitment to protect animal welfare. It is a cause that has always been near and dear to my heart. 
Tonight I'd like to remind everyone that there is still work to be done. I encourage you to get involved and support the laws and legislation that protect voiceless animals. Thank you, Senator Booker, and congratulations again on this much-deserved honor. Thank you so much, Ms. Gunn, for your kind words, and even more so for your lifetime of championing social justice and the arts. I am really honored to receive this award from the Animal Legal Defense Fund. I know that the ALDF works tirelessly in the urgently, morally urgent uh, work to protect wildlife and really to end uh, things like animal testing and to protect and champion animals uh, from abuse. As a senator, I've introduced and passed legislation to limit animal testing. Uh, with an incredible group of advocates, we've made progress. Uh, we're now working to accelerate the transition uh, to non-animal tests, which have often uh, been seen to provide even more scientifically reliable data. And I'm working to restore the Endangered Species Act. Uh, its protections are critical for wolves, and this is a big issue uh, and priority for my office. We want to also enact a national ban on the sh sale of shark fins. But I'd like to focus my remarks today on our shared work to end the abuses of multinational, big corporate factory farming that lead to terrible suffering of farm animals, suffering that our consumers at large uh, would not tolerate if they knew the depth and the extent of it all. Every year, it's an estimated that about 9 billion land animals are raised and killed for food in the U.S. alone, and nearly all of them live short and miserable lives in factory farms. The factory farming system not only causes a horrific level of suffering for animals, factory farming pollutes our air and our water, it exploits workers, it drives independent family farmers into bankruptcy, and presents serious threats to public health. The Animal Legal Defense Fund and I share this commitment to transparency within our food system. Consumers should know. And we know that animals, uh, uh, that with animals, too many people are taking shortcuts uh, that are undermining not just animal safety, but the health and safety of the public at large. We know that potentially some of the next pandemics that we see could be antibiotic resistant strains that threaten human health. We all share the philosophy that fair competition in the agricultural industry is critical as it allows consumers to make informed decisions and have access to healthier, more humane alternatives. We are on the right side of justice for humans and for animals. And we know that the Animal Legal Defense Fund and I are gonna continue this fight and we are gonna make sure uh, that we do what is necessary. Uh, to protect the health and safety and the well-being of us all because we're all part of the same system. King said it. Dr. King said we are all caught, caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a common garment of destiny. That truth is not just for uh, 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 humans. It's for, true for all living creatures. It's true for all of our environment, our ecology. This is one of the reasons why we turn that moral belief into the practical work to pass legislation. It's why I'm a sponsor of the Farm System Reform Act, which will fix our broken food system and transition us to a more sustainable and humane agricultural model that helps us all. Legislation like this would put a moratorium on large factory farms and will hold the industrial animal agricultural industry responsible for the harm and the pollution and the cost they pass on to all of us. I've been working hard to put forward legislation like never seen before uh, in, in, in the Congress. It really challenges this broken system. Another legislation I'm proud of is Protecting America's Meatpacking Workers Act. And one of the things that it does is it protects workers uh, from so many of the risks associated with faster line speeds at slaughter, and many of the other challenges in the meatpacking industry as we see it now, more concentrated and in many ways more cruel to its workers. I'm grateful that the Animal Legal Defense Fund has endorsed both of these bills and is working extensively 
to end the abuses suffered by factory farm animals in Congress and in state legislatures around the country. So I want to say in closing that I am humbled uh, that you all are awarding me tonight, but I want to tell you uh, what is inspiring to me is that we share the same vision of justice, justice for all, justice for humans and animals, justice for the environment, justice for workers and families and communities. It is the larger justice that we know we must affirm because injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And so I know that, that this is gonna be a tough battle. I know that we have mountains to climb. I know some people can get discouraged at times, but I tell you every great movement for justice in America has faced that same challenge. I believe that hope is the active conviction that despair will never have the last word. We must be activists of hope. We must be agents of love. We must not give up. I want all of you to know your voices are being heard and I'm honored to be a part, a small part of this broader coalition of animal welfare advocates, family farmers, environmental justice groups, labor organizations, public health advocates, all of us coming together, understanding that the food system we have right now uh, is truly, truly one of the greatest challenges we face within our nation when it comes to helping folks live life uh, high level with high levels of well-being, with high levels of justice. Together we can make the world a better place for all animals, people. We all are in this together, and I'm excited about our future work together. Thank you. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Senator Booker, such powerful words for all of us activists of hope here tonight. We have three special guests who also wanted to share their appreciation for Senator Booker's commitment to animals. Hi, Senator Booker. I am so incredibly proud to know that we have someone like you working so hard to end animal suffering. You have inspired me and so many others to keep the faith that government can and will end unnecessary animal suffering. Thank you so much to leaders like you and the ALDF. Um, thank you endlessly and congratulations on your well-deserved award. Hey, Senator, it's Paul Wesley here. Congratulations on your amazing award. And from one vegan New Jersey native to another, thank you so much for everything that you do for animals. We are truly, truly grateful. Hi, Senator, it's Genesis. Thank you so much for being an inspiring leader and raising awareness for all animals to your colleagues in Washington. Young people believe that your powerful platform will always echo what's best for our future. Thank you so much, Genesis, Kate, and Paul. All animals deserve to be protected under the same anti-cruelty laws. Will you make a gift of $10,000 to change laws at the federal and state level? We need your help. Thank you, Rachel Lyon and Robert Radabaugh for your gift of $13,400. That must be a special number for you. Maybe you have your own special number out there. Also, thank you, Ree Woodward, for your gift of $13,000. And thank you, Henry Spiegel, for your gift of $12,000. I also want to thank Sue Flagg and Carlo Roca for your gift of $10,000. What generous donors. But we have a few others to thank at the $10,000 gift level. There's Tanya Yonker, Gail Luecki, Joan Troy. Kelly Spring, Lillian Overman, and Ruth Kennedy. We appreciate you so much. Oh, wait a minute. Cordelia Stone, thank you for your gift at the $10,000 level. And Sarah Murray at $10,000. This is incredible. And there are gifts coming in at 
all different amounts right now. So remember, your gift at any level is appreciated. So if you wish to donate an amount that I do not announce, please do so. Let's take a look at how much we have raised so far with our leadership giving and what has come in this evening. We have raised $641,975. We are well on the way to achieving our goal. Are you ready to set a record tonight? I am. Next. I'd like to introduce David Rosengard, a managing attorney with ALDF's Criminal Justice Program to present a Leadership in Animal Protection Award to the Brooks Institute for Animal Rights Law and Policy. David works with law enforcement, prosecutors, judges, and veterinarians on behalf of victims of animal cruelty. Under Tim's leadership, the Brooks Institute has worked to bring different animal law players together with an eye towards generating impactful and long-lasting legal change for animals. With their help, the Animal Legal Defense Fund has been able to embark on critical partnerships with the National Judicial College and the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges. These previously unchartered trajectories are instrumental to educating critical legal actors as to why and how animals matter under the law. Similarly, the Brooks Institute has convened a groundbreaking group of legal scholars and practitioners to explore how the pursuit of courtroom animal advocate programs can have an impactful benefit on animals and the justice system. Tim Madura and the Brooks Institute have also played a significant role in developing the next generation of animal lawyers and enabling them to embark on impactful, career-long work. On behalf of myself and all of us here at ALDF, it is my honor to present Tim Madura and the Brooks Institute for Animal Rights Law and Policy with our Leadership in Animal Protection Award. Hello, my name is Tim Madura, and I'm the Executive Director and General Counsel for the Brooks Institute for Animal Rights Law and Policy. On behalf of the Brooks Institute and my leadership counterpart, Greg Osco, I thank ALDF for this recognition of our contribution to the animal protection community and the non-human animals we serve. Of course, what we do would not be possible but for the vision of our benefactor, Brooks McCormick Jr. Brooks was a man of deliberate thought and vision. He invested his life into his family of non-human animals and as a final gesture, left his estate with the intention of pursuing a paradigm shift for the protection and rights of non-human animals. The result of Brooks' legacy has been the creation of a unique think tank. The Brooks Institute listens intently to the animal protection community for opportunity gaps. We then pursue synergistic gap-filling collaborations that create exciting game-changing projects, programs, and initiatives. The Brooks Institute views itself as an intellectual fruit tree. We offer our fruits to the members of the animal protection community who may pick fruit from our tree to nourish their own missions. Again, thank you ALDF for this recognition. We have enjoyed our partnership with you in the service of non-human animals. Thank you so much, David, Tim, and the Brooks Institute for Animal Rights Law and Policy. What a legacy of leadership your support has inspired and created. And now, Moving to the $5,000 level, I'd like to pass things over to ALDF's Executive Director, Stephen Wells, to tell you about the remarkable story of Justice the Horse. Animal cruelty laws were originally focused on the harm that could be done to people by allowing people to commit crimes against animals. They were not so much focused on what actually happened to the animals or the animals' pain and suffering as a result of that cruelty. The laws really evolved in that now we have great evidence of how much animals can suffer both physically and psychologically when crimes are committed. So animal cruelty laws likewise now recognize that animals can be harmed, they can suffer and so forth. And for that reason, in some places, and Oregon is one state that has now recognized that animals can be victims of crimes. 
And what does that mean? Well, when the state recognizes that you are a crime victim or an individual is a crime victim, that comes with some very specific rights. And one of those is that you have a right to sue the person who committed a crime against you for damages that will help to cover for however you were harmed by that crime. So here we have a horse named Justice, and this is in the state of Oregon. We have his abuser who has pled guilty and admits causing the harm to Justice, which comes in the form of injuries that he sustained by being neglected, which he'll suffer for the rest of his life. So Justice the horse is going to need to have very expensive medical care for the rest of his life. The question comes down to his status as a recognized crime victim in the state should give him that right to sue the person who committed that crime, the abuser, to recover the costs of his medical care for the rest of his life. If that doesn't happen, who's going to cover those costs? Is it going to be the state? Should it be the people, taxpayers? Should it be people who have donated money to a private sanctuary? That's profoundly unfair. You know, the, the situation here is really clear. The abuser who caused the harm that's resulting in those medical bills should be the one to pay. The Animal Legal Defense Fund is committed to defending the rights of animals like Justice the Horse and fulfilling our mission to protect the lives and advance the interests of animals through the legal system. And we need your help. Thank you, Stephen. Gifts at the $5,000 level will help us go to court to fight for the legal recognition of animals as individual victims of abuse and neglect, and in doing so, break legal ground for all animals. Who will step up at this level? Thank you so much, Barbara Megan, for your gift of $5,000 and Catherine Sterling for your gift of $5,000. And if you want to use your first name, just like John, John, thank you for your gift of $5,000. We appreciate your generosity, but I have more people to thank. Thank you also to Alicia Rodriguez and the Stray Dog Institute. Sarah Murray, thank you for your additional gift. Rita Vallett, thank you for your additional gift. Margaret Morin, for your gift of $5,000. Who else will help us at this level and make a profound difference for animals like justice? Wow. Kendra Daniel, thank you for your gift of $5,000. And thank you to Audrey Burn for your generous gift of $7,500. Now we'll move to the $2,500 level. Let's talk about ALDF's work on captive wildlife. We are happy to announce that one wildlife trafficker, Robert Sawmiller, is now out of business. Following a lawsuit by ALDF last year, the USDA canceled this notorious wildlife exhibitor and trafficker's license to exhibit, breed, and sell animals regulated by the Animal Welfare Act. This victory is a culmination of more than a decade of ALDF's work tracking violations by this wildlife trafficker and bringing smoking gun evidence to the USDA, they were forced to take action. The immediate result, five grizzly bears, two black bears, two wolves, and one mountain lion were confiscated and transferred to the Wild Animal Sanctuary in Kingsburg, Colorado. Here, you can see one of those wolves Look how happy she is in this temporary enclosure. After acclimating to her new environment, she moved from this enclosure to roam free around the beautiful sanctuary in Colorado. Wow, that really says a lot about why we're here and what is being done to help save 
so many wild animals who are languishing in captivity. ALDF currently has five roadside zoo lawsuits in progress. Who will support ALDF at the $2,500 level to help pursue more roadside zoos and stop traffickers like Robert Sawmiller? Thank you so much, David Simon and Tanya Marie, for your pledge of $2,500. Thank you also to Nancy Grove, Diane Heydrich, Heidi Hurd, Sophia Luge, and Tamara Connor for your generosity. And Dr. Gordon Cannon, thank you so much for your $3,000 gift. Through these challenging times, ALDF has never been busier forging ahead with even greater urgency. Is there anyone else who would like to pledge $2,500? I want to thank Donna Gelman Rodriguez for your gift at $500. Thank you so much. And now we move to the $1,000 level. We have another special treat. ALDF friend and renowned cat behaviorist and TV star Jackson Galaxy is here to share with us the importance of ALDF's work to stop shameful commercial breeders known as puppy and kitten mills. Hi, I'm Jackson Galaxy, host of Animal Planet's television show, My Cat from Hell. I am just thrilled to be here tonight with my friends at the Animal Legal Defense Fund. And I want to encourage you first and foremost, before I say anything, to make a contribution during this special fundraising event. Now, I've been associated with the Animal Legal Defense Fund for many years, and I'll tell you why they're so special to me in a moment. But I first want to tell you about what we worked on most recently together, and that was to tell the public about kitten mills. And if you don't know what a kitten mill is. It's a place that breeds cats in big numbers for profit with no regard at all for the cat and kitten health, their well-being, their, their emotional behavioral health, and at the same time they're also defrauding families who buy these kittens. I live streamed a social media event and discussed the ALDF case against a particular kitten mill with Animal Legal Defense Fund attorney Christopher Berry. Adorable Stars sold sick and dying kittens to the public. And when the Animal Legal Defense Fund files lawsuits, they, they work not only to shut down such human, inhumane places, but to set precedents that make it easier to win similar lawsuits and shut down similar animal abusers. And that's bringing me to what drew me to Animal Legal Defense Fund so many years ago. I was just drawn to them because I love the fact that ALDF works to get the courts to recognize animals as living beings, which of course we all know that they are. They use every angle of the law, from lawsuits and legislation, working with judges, even law schools and students, creating opportunities for scholarships, for internships and fellowships at their organization. The Animal Legal Defense Fund is unique in working in this comprehensive way to gain legal protection for animals. So, please, make a generous gift tonight to help the Animal Legal Defense Fund do what they do so well. Get lasting protections for animals through the legal system. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you, Jackson, for your passionate words of support and for your tireless efforts to make a difference in the lives of animals. And as Jackson mentioned, just last month, ALDF filed a class action lawsuit against a Midwest puppy mill broker, Jack's Puppies, and a network of individuals and businesses who conspired with California pet stores to illegally transport and sell puppies. They falsely represented these dogs from some of the worst puppy mill facilities in the country and posed as animal rescue organizations to get around California's ban on such sales. 
these puppy laundering schemes must be stopped. This demonstrates how far breeders and brokers will go to disguise their cruelty that profits from animals suffering. Now I'd like to share a video with you about a puppy named Tig, a survivor who was rescued from one of these facilities. When a person brings a dog into their family, they want to believe that the animal came from a humane source, but far too often, the dogs being sold across a variety of platforms come from puppy mills. Puppy mills are commercial breeding operations that prioritize profit over the welfare of the animals. That profit incentive is pervasive uh, throughout the entire operation. So Tig is a puppy mill survivor. She spent the first five years of her life being bred on a puppy mill. She had, you know, never really experienced anything as a dog. So everything was a first. When you combine animals with business, there's an incentive to exploit them. With approximately 10,000 puppy mills in the United States alone, it's estimated that this accounts for over 2 million puppies every year who are bred and raised in devastating conditions. I built this box to the minimum requirement set out by the Animal Welfare Act uh, for a dog that's tig size. So this is an extremely small, confined area for her to spend basically her entire life. Um, and unfortunately, there are thousands of dogs in this exact condition across the country in puppy mills. The Animal Legal Defense Fund is using a number of legislative approaches to address the issue of puppy mills. Really, the safest thing to do is to go to a bona fide animal rescue and save a dog. That's the best way to make sure that you're not supporting the puppy mill industry. There is a lot of, you know, rehabilitation that needs to take place. But in the end, you're making such a huge impact. You're allowing this dog to have the life that, that all dogs should have. Oh, <laughs> who will support ALDF at the $1,000 level to help combat these brazen and cruel schemes to profit from puppy and kitten mills. Remember, your pledge is 100% tax deductible, and it will bring us closer to our goal. Thank you, Alice Lawyer, Janet Ott, and Lisa Joka for your gifts of $1,000. Heidi Hurd, thank you for your additional gift at $1,000. Sarah Lewick, Jan Stevenson, and what did I see? Rita Vallette. Yep, she gave another gift at $2,500. Thank you, thank you so much. We are now at the $500 level. This will be the final level I will be calling out this evening. But before I begin, I'd like to present our final honoree for the evening visionary supporter of ALDF's animal law program and longtime animal advocate, David Rubin. Join us as we share our heartfelt tribute to David. David, I want to thank you on behalf of myself and everyone at the Animal Legal Defense Fund for being such a visionary and pioneer in your support for our programs in the law schools, including helping law students in their desire to make animal law their career or a part of their career. You have had such an incredible impact and you've been an inspiration to so many. The David Rubin Summer Clerkship Program has been so incredibly important to the careers of so many aspiring animal law attorneys. But I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for our nearly 20 years of collaborating and conspiring together to grow the field of animal law and really help develop animal law in the law schools. Thank you so much. I was fortunate to be the recipient of a David Rubin summer clerkship in the summer of 2013. Spending the summer learning from the Animal Legal Defense Fund's litigators was the experience of a lifetime and it set me on the path to changing the world for animals. No experience is more vital to creating that next generation than the David Rubin Summer Clerkship. 
So thank you so, so much for your generosity. It's done so much good for animals. Receiving a David Rubin clerkship during law school shifted the trajectory of my professional and personal life. And I'm here to tell you today, David, that the work that began in that clerkship has really blossomed. We've tripled the number of statewide animal cruelty special prosecutors. And my efforts on that all grew out of the David Rubin summer clerkship opportunity. Without that, innumerable animals, to say nothing of myself, would be worse off. And I, I don't have the words to say how grateful I am so I'll simply say, thank you. Clerking for ALDF changed the course of my life. And I just wanna say thank you, David Rubin, for helping law students realize their dreams of working for the animals. How wonderful to see the appreciation from those who've benefited over the years from the David Rubin Clerkship Program. Now, to wrap up our fundraising for the event, please continue to make gifts at any level that works for you. Every gift matters. This is your chance to make an impact and give a gift from the heart. The Animal Legal Defense Fund provides free legal assistance to local prosecutors, law enforcement, and animal shelters handling animal cruelty cases. Who will give a gift of $500 to make communities and animals safer by fueling the work of our criminal justice team? Thank you, Leslie Barkas and Carrie Masters. Also, thank you to Lisa Kuehl. Thank you so much for your gift. And thank you, Stephanie Stratzalka. I think I saw you. your donation came in twice tonight at $250. Thank you so much. Uh, Segal Sangvi for your gift at $400. Thank you so much. Opportunities are presented to us every day to do good and to be the change we want to see in the world. That opportunity is before you tonight. We want to thank you for all the gifts. Eric Young just made a donation of $500. Thank you so much. And at this time, we want to welcome your gift at any levels. ALDF's commitment to bringing individual and institutional animal abusers to justice and stopping animal abuse is at the core of our mission. We have been working for more than 40 years, and thanks to the commitment and support of generous donors like you, ALDF has set legal precedents and made lasting change. Together with your strong support, we will continue our pursuit of justice for animals. We are now going to hear a message from one of our company sponsors, Carol House Furniture, located in the heart of the country in St. Louis, Missouri. Here tonight is owner Brooke Dubman with a personal message for you. Hi, I'm Brooke Dubman, owner of Carroll House Furniture in St. Louis, Missouri, and proud sponsor of tonight's Justice for Animals event, supporting the great work of the Animal Legal Defense Fund. Carroll House was the first and only animal-friendly furniture store in the country for 15 years and counting. We actively promote and educate the community in the importance of animals' lives and protecting their rights through the great work of the ALDF. Thank you for joining us by being a part of this event and a night of giving. Thank you, Brooke and Amy Dubman, for your wonderful platinum sponsorship of this fundraiser. We appreciate businesses like Carroll House Furniture taking a stand to advance animal protection through the legal system. Remember to stick around for a performance by Moby, 
just for us tonight. But first, we're excited to announce the winner of our animal video contest. Here again to introduce our contest winner is Jackson Galaxy. Thank you, Gail, and thank you to everyone who submitted videos of their companion animals. It was a tough decision, and I am just so excited to share the winning video with you now. So, without further ado, let it roll! What an adorable video. And I have an update to share. It looks like we have raised a phenomenal $738,500. Wow, this is a record setting amount for the Justice for Animals fundraiser. Again, Thank you so much for your tremendous generosity. And now, back to Stephen Wells for some final thoughts. This has been a wonderful evening. Thank you for making it a huge success. I have several heartfelt acknowledgements to make. I want to thank again our amazing Platinum Event Chairs, John and Timmy Sobrato, and our sponsors, Carroll House Furniture, Beyond Meat, and Oric Harrington and Sutcliffe. And I want to especially thank all of our host committee members. You're now seeing their names on your screen. Their commitment to ALDF and helping us help more animals is simply tremendous and fundamental to our success tonight. I don't have words to describe how grateful we are to them for their leadership and their commitment to using the law to help animals. And finally, a huge thank you to all of you who contributed and joined us today. Thank you for being with us for generously donating and making it possible for us to continue to achieve more legal victories for animals and break more legal ground for animals. If you haven't yet made a gift, or if you've made a gift and want to encourage your friends or family to support our work, there's still time. The donation link will stay active until February 4th. All you need to do is go to aldf.org JFA for Justice for Animals. We need everyone to stand with us and support us at whatever level you can. With all of you, we are making a difference for animals and will continue to do so. And don't leave yet. We're going to close with a very special performance by musical guest Moby. Not only is Moby an amazingly talented musician, but he has bottomless compassion for animals and demonstrates that in all of his work. From the bottom of my heart, and on behalf of all the animals we are fighting for, a million thanks to all of you. You're changing the world. And now take it away, Moby. Hi, I'm Moby. We're gonna do a disco version with a very fancy keyboard that I bought in a thrift shop of my song, The Perfect Life. Oh, Oh, 
Perfect life is all we need. 